This mini PC from Geekom has a feature that not many full-size PCs have. Just need to lower my desk for this bit. And bring this one in. Because surprisingly, this mini PC supports four monitors. And I've set it up that I can move between each of the monitors. So this is the display settings. And if I wanted to drag that up to the top, I can. I can also drag it down and to the left onto my little touchscreen display. And also I can drag it to the right. It's quite cool as well because uh, if you open another tab on a browser, so if we go for YouTube, I can grab that tab and separate it and put it on this display and I've still got whatever I was looking at on this display. Really nice feature, but uh, it works really well. It's got 32 gig of RAM, which really copes with multitasking well. It's really hard to try and convey this, but uh, yeah, anything I want to open up, uh, say for instance, I open up another browser and let's go to TikTok because I think that's in portrait mode. Just see what happens. Certainly is on a phone, but then grab that tab and move it across and across and then maximize it on this little Ymaxit display. And if I click on something, you can see that it's more sort of portrait oriented. Very impressive. Okay, so let's have a look at the hardware. So I'll just shut it down so I can show you all the monitors that are plugged in and how they're plugged in. So first one is uh, an HDMI to USB-C adapter uh, because it's using a USB-C display port. Uh, I also have another USB-C display port on the back which was going into the touchscreen monitor which is a USB-C monitor so I didn't need any extra adapters for that. I've got a standard HDMI cable uh, which was going to another monitor and I've also got a mini display port, which is the sort of type you get on older MacBooks. And this, I'm using a HDMI to mini display port adapter. This only cost me about four pound, this adapter. These were pretty cheap. They also work with mobile phones and it works with my iPad Pro as well. So I had ethernet plugged in and also power. And there's the mini PC. So in addition to that, we've got a USB-A port, we've got an analog port out for speakers and headphones, obviously a power switch. This is just a Kensington lock, so you can secure it safely somewhere. And then on the back, I was using the power supply, the display port, the ethernet. I wasn't using these two USB-A connectors. I was using that display port and the HDMI. And on this side, we've got a full-size SD card slot. It's a really solid piece of kit, really nicely put together. The power supply it uses is a 19 volt, just like a laptop power supply. So let's have a look at some of the specs on the Geekon website. Uh, it's also available through Amazon as well. Uh, they've got their own store on there. From the Geekon website, I've got this version, the i7 11th generation with 32 gig of RAM and one terabyte. So they talk about the 11th gen Intel i7 processor and the fact that it's got Intel Iris graphics on board. Got Wi-Fi 6, dual channel DDR RAM, and I've got 32 gig. Uh, I've also got the terabyte SSD, which is an M.2 drive. There is space to put a SATA drive in as well. So that's a very cheap way of getting lots of storage inside your device. And it mentions about the fan. I have to say the fan is really good. In the gaming test, which I'll do a little bit later on in the video, I'm really surprised at how quiet this mini PC is. I've had quite a few mini PCs before and uh, the ones that have fans tend to be quite noisy. This definitely isn't. And I am quite fussy on, on noisy fans and things like that. I like silent cooling if possible. So two USB 4 ports, which are these really fast display ports that I was using earlier on in the video. Talks about multiple 8K displays. I mean, that sounds pretty impressive. I was using 4K and three 1080 monitors and the performance was really good. Now the H at the end of the i7 signifies high power. And uh, as you can see from two other i7s in the range, the scores are much better. We've got four cores, eight threads, and it turbos at five gigahertz. And it does feel really snappy. They talk about the gaming performance, and we'll see a little bit of that later on. And they talk about the speed of the SSD drive. Here's the four video connectors that I was using. 
newer Bluetooth standard and Wi-Fi 6. Multiple operating systems, I might try a bit of Linux later on. And here's more about the fan, so quite inefficient. So they're talking about less than 45 decibels fully loaded. And it, I am really impressed with the fan. And they also talk about the testing they do, and they do talk about much hotter environments than the UK. I've got some 8K files on this SSD drive. So let's see how this plays on my 4K TV. So let's hit the space bar. And it does look absolutely fine. Uh, it's lovely and fast, not at all jerky really nice performance now this mini pc isn't really designed for games it hasn't got a dedicated gpu but i like playing games so i thought i'd give it a try so first up let's try a bit of gta which i've got in the epic games launcher so let's launch that okay so let's start off at 1920 by 1080 which is the desktop resolution uh, that it's running at the moment which i think it copes with reasonably well uh, I mean, obviously this game, there's just so much detail in this and so much going on, loads of draw distance, look at the bus, look, crikey. Let's just decline that phone call. But you can see that it's it's running that uh, reasonably well. It's playable, but I would rather play it at 720. Uh, so let's pause that and go into settings, apply the changes. Yeah, straight away, it just feels much smoother. And it's not uh, it's not dropping any frames at all. Oh, yeah, happy with that. If I jump out and have a look around, you can see that it. I've got to be careful not to get any swearing in there. So have a little drive around and just see how well it copes with it. Oh, look how many cars there are parked in the parking lot. That four-wheel drive's tempting. Yeah, the detail levels are incredible for a game that's been out over 10 years. Use A to duck while in the vehicle, oh yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so that definitely is perfectly fine. Uh, running really nicely on this, really happy with that. And let's try something a bit faster to see how well it copes with that. Yeah, that is running on. Yeah, that's running at a really nice speed. Happy with that? I'll get some air. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, let's try something a bit more modern. Let's try a bit of Death Stranding, which was free from Epic Games. Now this game came out in 2020, and so it's a modern game which would definitely require a dedicated graphics card, which obviously this mini PC hasn't got. This is onboard graphics, uh, but I've turned everything down I'm running at 720 on pretty much the lowest settings, but it actually still looks all right. It looked amazing at 1080. So let's have a look around. So what, 22, 23 FPS. You can see that waterfall in the background. The detail levels are incredible. It's really, really good. Such an impressive game, which I've never played before. But you can see that it's moving around reasonably. What we got, 21, 25 FPS. I wasn't expecting this level of frames per second. I'm not sure I get over there. Is there any bridges down here? No, but there is, I guess that barrier I could probably get across somehow. Probably better off to go, yeah, over the rocks. Oh, oh dear. Let's try and get across and see if we can see something more interesting. Nearly made it. Some more stuff down here, look. Is that too heavy? <laughs> Definitely like playing a film. Very, very cinematic. Okay, so let's try a bit of Fortnite. I haven't tried this for ages. I've set the settings very, very low. So let's see what it's like. It's got a lot tougher to run Fortnite. I ran this in a video on uh, a really old Pentium Gold laptop with four gig of RAM. And I would say it runs better than Fortnite runs now, but that's obviously so much has been added to the game. 
Let's find something a little bit built up. I can see a character over there. Any weapons on the roof? No, nothing yet. Oh, something down there. Uh, it seems to be all right. Oh, I've got a decent weapon to start off with. Right, what sort of weapon is this then? But yeah, it feels pretty powerful. <laughs> right, so, is there anyone around? Someone down there. Oh, it's a decent weapon. Let's get some more of that ammo. Oh, someone up there on the hill. Hopefully, they keep running and I'll... Oh dear. Oh, oh yes, does it again. Oh, okay, this heals me. No, I want... Okay. Oh, and there's no build, is there? So, where's that coming from? Where is it? Oh, yeah. My weapon's better than yours. Oh, oh well, we got some kills and it was definitely slowing down at that point. So yeah, Fortnite is a bit of a struggle, but it was still enjoyable. This is the Ryujinx emulator and uh, it is running, but this particular game is one of the harder games to run. If you pick some easier games on that platform to run, I'm sure you wouldn't have any problem at all. But yeah, it is a little bit slow, especially when you get too many things on screen at once. Okay, this is definitely running much better. It's not full speed, but it's pretty playable. <laughs> right let's have a look inside it does look like you can lever up the top uh, which might give access to the SATA drive but I haven't tried it because I couldn't see anything in the instructions but let's have a look at what's on the bottom let's undo these four screws okay so that's all four I guess this pulls off now okay so that's all four Oh, good job I didn't pull that too quick. Uh, so it's got a little adapter for the SATA drive. Oh, so the SATA drive is in the bottom. And one of these I've got Chrome OS Flex on. I think it's that one. So we've got a thermal pad in here and an aluminium plate, uh, which is on here to disperse heat from the NVMe drive. It's still got a sticker on there. You'd probably be better off to take that sticker off so that it would transfer heat better through this, but I'm going to leave it on there. So let's pop this drive in. Yeah, that just slots in. So that must have been on that way around. But let's have a look in here first of all, so you can see the two sticks of RAM that are in there. Uh, and the fan is obviously underneath, and it blows out through these side vents over here and here. So yeah, that way to be on top of the M.2 drive. And this kind of slots in place. Yeah, and then we screw it back. Does this pop off? It definitely looks like you'd be able to lever that up. Yeah, it definitely levers up. Yeah, it must come off. So it just pops off, but uh, the fan is covered anyway. So I don't think I'm going to bother delving a bit more deeper into that. We did see a picture of it early on on the website. Let's just boot up Chrome OS that way around. There you go, that all snaps into place nicely. So as I want to boot from the SSD drive that I've just put in here, let's go into the boot menu. So if we power on and then press F7. On my keyboard I need to press function as well. And you can see we get a boot menu. And we need to identify the drive that Chrome OS Flex is on. Well, I know it's this one because it's a 60 gig drive. This is the Lexar one terabyte SSD that's already in there. So let's pick the 60 gig drive with Chrome OS Flex on it. And Chrome OS Flex is a free operating system you can download to use on any PC, especially good for really old devices. I mean, you don't need it for, for this device because it's nice and fast. 
So if we do try it first and hit next, so I'm not going to install it onto this personal use. I'm just going to do browser's guest just to show that it's working. Let's accept that. So you can see this is the operating system you get on a Chromebook, but you can also install the Linux terminal on here and it is a really nice snappy operating system. So you could have this if there was uh, someone using your computer that you weren't sort of happy with them using your computer, then let them boot up with Chrome OS Flex as a guest and they can browse the internet and can't really do any damage to the rest of your computer. So if we do BBC Sport just to show how snappy it is. I mean, it is just going to be lightning fast. Hot UK deals. And it comes up immediately, launch the page, and yeah, it, as expected, you know, on an i7 uh, with 32 gig of RAM, it's going to be great on this really, really lightweight operating system. Okay, so let's shut that down and show you the BIOS. Oh, it's down here to shut down. And shut down. Now, on startup, if you rapidly press the delete key, you get into the BIOS. So if you want to be able to change anything on here, uh, and this shows me that I've got the i7 that it says I had and various other bits of information but there's also a boot menu on here and you can change priority between different systems and so on but I'm just going to quit out of that and it will boot in back into Windows. Okay so definitely super impressed with this mini PC thanks very much to Geekon for sending me this one to test uh, it's much appreciated and uh, I will definitely be using it a lot. Okay so hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe.